things I learned in my PhD so you don't have to do one, part four. There's one sentence that my graduate supervisor said to me that stuck the most. Back when I was fresh in my master's, I was putting together a presentation and probably included a graph that looks something like this. The X and Y axis aren't important here, but do you notice anything missing? My supervisor did and said the sentence that has stuck with me almost 10 years later. Central tendency scores without estimates of variance are meaningless. Or translated, averages are meaningless without knowing the spread of the data. See, a central tendency score, like a mean or a median, tries to summarize a lot of data in a single point or a line. But obviously this misses some of what the data might actually be telling us. See, it might seem like my participants showed a difference at week three, but when you take into account variance, they weren't statistically different. Let me give you another example. Here's a graph of Canada's median household income from 2012 to 2022. As you can see, market income and after-tax income look pretty stable, except in reality, they're not. Income inequality in Canada is now at its highest level ever recorded, meaning the gap between the top 20% and the bottom 20% has never been wider. So how does income still look stable? Well, it turns out if the top 20% earns more, but the middle 60% earns less, then the average can look pretty similar. There's a lot of other statistics that help us tell the story of a data set. But the message here is that averages can be useful, but shouldn't be taken at face value. Just like a book cover, you can't judge a study by its average.